G'day everyone and welcome to the Graincorp Wyalong webinar. I'm Izzy Hutchinson, the Grower Services Manager for the Southern Region based here in Wagga. I'll be your host for this webinar this morning, which is being held in place of physical grower meetings at our Wyalong, Killeen, Kaikiora, Naradin, Telebajil, Lake Ejelico, Uavalong West and Condo sites. Firstly, I would like to take a moment to apologise for last week's cancellation but I also appreciate your understanding on this matter. Hopefully this morning can go off without a hitch. 2020 has certainly been a challenging year for everyone. And, and while things have not always gone to plan throughout the year, a pleasing, a pleasing result has been the return of some decent rainfall across the east coast of Australia. While it's an exciting time for the industry, there is also a lot riding on this crop. And we are not underestimating the importance of getting this crop off to generate some badly needed cash flow for our rural communities. No doubt some of the topics discussed this morning will lead to further questions. You may have noticed already that this session is equipped with a chat feature. I strongly encourage you to put your, forward your questions at any time and we will endeavour to cover them off as we go. If we do not cover off your questions by the end of the webinar, then you can expect a phone call from an appropriate team member to follow up post the webinar. Given it's a busy time of the year, I will aim to wrap the session up within the hour. So please understand that we may not be able to drill down into too much detail on operations at every site. To kick off the presentation this morning, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our local site managers. Hi, I'm Joshua Hudson, site manager at Condoble. This year we are receiving all the main milling grades of wheat, Bar One, Spartacus and Latrobe Malt, as well as Canola and Manola. We'll be running two extended shifts, capable of running up to 24 hours if required. On top of this, we have upgraded our bunkers, so all bunkers will be capable of using drive-over hoppers to reduce turnaround times when at site. All in all, this is shaping up to be a great harvest, and I'm looking forward to dealing with you this year. Hi, for those that, you, uh, that don't know me, I'm Darren Hume, Site Manager at Killeen. With a big harvest coming up, we'll be running two shifts, receiving canola, barley, which will consist of Latrobe malt and bar one, and also various grades of wheat. Um, also in West Wyalong, we'll be receiving canola, Latrobe malt, planet malt and bar one, and again, obviously, um, various grades of wheat. And last but not least, our Kikiora site will be receiving Latrobe malt, bar one, and various grades of wheat. If you have any questions regarding those three sites, don't hesitate to call me. And more importantly, have a very safe and successful harvest. Cheers. Hi, I'm Will Whiting. I'm a site manager for Uavalon West, Lake Jellico, Naradin, and Talabajil. Uh, each site will have a site manager running them during the harvest period. Uh, they will be Graham Smith at Lake Jellico, Reg Pawsey at Naradin, uh, Jock Harris at Tullabajil, and Brian Clemson at Uablong West. Uh, we will be running extended hours and double shifts at sites, receiving both wheat and barley at all sites, uh, Latrobe malt barley at Lake Jellico, and Latrobe and Spartacus malt at Naradin. Uh, look forward to seeing you at the harvest. Uh, if you have any problems, just give me a ring. It's great to see some familiar faces amongst our site managers in the Wailong area and hopefully that provides you with some insight into who you'll see this coming harvest. I now want to take a moment to speak to Robert Spurway, our Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer. Good morning Robert and thanks for your time this morning. Morning Izzy. I just, can you give us a brief update as to what's been happening across the Grain Court business in the past 18 months Robert to get ready for this harvest? Um, sure, and I uh, just want to add my welcome to all of our growers. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning, and as he said, I'm sure you can understand the reason why we're having to do a webinar uh, in these current times where it's not necessarily safe to hold traditional meetings. It certainly has been a busy year at Grain Corp, and what's important about that is it's left us in a really strong financial position and really focused on planning for this harvest and making sure that we can be at our very best uh, to exceed your expectations through the harvest. Uh, many of you will know that I joined Grain Corp back in March. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. 
and looking forward to meeting many of you as we're able to through the harvest uh, in a safe way. A couple of things I just wanted to talk about that the team will elaborate on this morning is what we've been doing over the last few months as we prepare, to ha prepare for harvest. It's really been about two things, preparing for harvest and then also making sure we're prepared to do it safely and efficiently uh, through the COVID-19 pandemic restrictions. Um, as I said, we're coming into the harvest in a very strong financial position. Uh, we have bought additional machinery and equipment, and also we've been planning resources and people, and we've been doing that in a way that makes sure we're ready to cope with restrictions on movements of people and border closures. Uh, to put some numbers on it, we've uh, recruited uh, over 3,000 people and had more than 5,000 applicants for those roles. Um, so it's been a, a busy time, but we're really looking forward to the harvest. As I know, so many growers across East Coast Australia are, including yourselves. Uh, we've also bought additional equipment, as I said, tarps, um, some stackers uh, and some uh, drive over grids, uh, etc. The team will talk about that. So we're certainly looking forward to harvest. It is going to be an interesting harvest, though, with COVID controls in place. We are ready for that. And our focus on, is on making sure that you, you're kept safe, our people are safe, and ultimately that it's also a very efficient harvest process for us. Uh, we'll be moving to contactless harvest at our sites, um, and that'll allow us to use the Crop Connect, the Fastway products, and those sorts of things. So the, the team will be talking to you about that this morning and how that will work. We expect it's going to be more efficient, help with turnaround times, uh, and, and as I said, keep everyone safe. Um, so look, I'm happy to answer a few more questions, but I do just want to at this point wish you all a very safe harvest, favourable weather ahead, and of course a successful and prosperous harvest ahead. Thank you, Izzy, and thank you everyone for joining us. Thanks, Robert. I've actually got a question, Robert. We've done a number of these webinars across the East Coast now in the last few weeks, and a pretty common question that we're getting from growers is why is Grain Corp more competitive with grower pricing this year than we have been with previous years. Can you just give us some insight into that? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm delighted that people are seeing that because there's been a lot of hard work going to our network over the last uh, two or three years. And in many parts of the country, we haven't had the grain to demonstrate the benefits of that. There's a couple of key things coming through. You're seeing the benefits of the more efficient rail contracts and the repricing that we've done there. Uh, so that's coming through. Uh, you're also seeing the fact that we're much more focused on export. So with greater volumes, uh, we can be very efficient at moving grain from the growing regions out to the export ports. Uh, and that's, of course, important for the overall supply chain. So look, that's a couple of areas, but I think in a, in a nutshell, Izzy, it's really the combination of quite a few initiatives over the last two or three years. Uh, we're delighted to be able to share those benefits with growers now that we've got some grain to demonstrate the, the benefits. Brilliant. Thanks, Robert. Now, we've had an audience question come in here, Robert, from Carmel. Carmel's question is, you've been with Grain Corp for a few months now. What is it that excites you about the Grain Corp business? Um, look, it's a, a really a straightforward question in terms of one thing that stands out, and that's the quality of the people at Grain Corp. Before I started here, I did a bit of uh, research into the business and heard great things about the capability of the team at Grain Corp, uh, the connection we had ac across uh, regional Australia and all the communities we operate in. Uh, and although I haven't been able to get out and about as much as I would have liked in the last few months, I've certainly been able to travel in parts of New South Wales. And I've been super impressed by the capability of our people, uh, how focused they are on making sure that we meet your needs as growers, uh, but also the mix of new people that we have in the business bringing new ideas and new thinking. So, uh, look, really, uh, like many growers across Australia, Grain Corp is really excited to be coming into a harvest uh, across the whole East Coast that's looking much more favourable than we've seen for a number of years. And uh, I'm delighted that uh, our team uh, and our growers are going to have that opportunity ahead. Brilliant. Thanks, Robert. It's really pleasing to hear that the thing that excites you the most about this business is the people, because to be honest, that's probably the thing that excites me about the ag industry in general, not just at Grain Corp, is just the people and their willingness to support each other and, and get, it, get through the tough times. So that's fantastic. 
Now, Robert will stay yeah. online for the remainder of the webinar. So if you've got any questions, please send them through and we'll, um, we'll get Robert to come back in and answer them. So thanks very much for that update, Robert. But for the remainder of the My session, pleasure. we have four of our, sorry, for the remainder of the session, we have four of our talented staff members on board to answer any of your questions. I encourage that you post all questions into the chat section and we will endeavour to cover them. The panel this morning includes Craig Cochran, our Senior Manager of Supply Chain for the South, Warwick Smith, our Regional Operations Manager for Southern, Craig Hafner, our Area Manager for Wylong, and Phil Gay, our Local Grain Marketer for Wylong, Parks and the Cunningar areas. Firstly, I'll kick off with, with Craig. Craig, we've heard from the site managers, but can you just give us a recap in regards to what sites will store malt barley and canola this coming harvest? Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, canola will be received at Colleen and Wylong. Uh, Condadlin will be taking canola and manola. Uh, La Trobe, malt barley will be received at Lake Ajelago, Kaikoura and Colleen. La Trobe and Spartacus malts at Naradin and Condadlin. And La Trobe and Planet malts at West Wylong. Uh, Talalogy on the Avalon West sites will receive bar one barley segregation only. Um, and just while we're on it, just a quick reminder that our PPE requirements uh, remain the same as previous harvest. Uh, that is, high vis closing, uh, ink or high boots, safety glasses, and a hat or a cap just while at our sites. Thanks, Izzy. Brilliant. Thanks, Craig. Sounds like there's plenty of options in the Wylong region for malt barley if we um if we happen to get it. Now we've had an audience question come in here, and it's it's from. Laurie, and it, the question that we've got there is there's been a lot of media in regards to staff and labour within the ag industry. How is Grain Corp going about recruiting staff for this harvest? I think Woz will be best to best to answer this one. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. And, uh, yeah, good question, Laurie. Um, as Robert touched on in his uh, opening comments, yeah, we've been recruiting for quite a few months now for the harvest um, across the entire East Coast. Um, yeah, we, we roughly... You know, up around, we need about just over 3,000 harvest casuals to support us through the harvest period along the east coast. Um, a little bit more localised uh, here in the southern New South Wales region, we generally require up to about 800 casuals, which uh, we're really on track at the moment. Um, there are a few little gaps here and there just with some labouring positions, but all in all uh, looking really, really good to, um, you know, have enough staff to, you know, support the growers and, and provide the customer service that's going to be required for this, um, you know, important harvest. Thanks, Izzy. Brilliant. Sounds like we've got the recruitment sorted for across the East Coast. Craig, are you able to provide some insight into what this actually means for the Wylong area? Yes, Izzy, the Wylong area, uh, staffing perhaps just about 80% recruited at the moment. Um, I'm fairly confident of filling the vacant positions over the next week or so. Uh, we're mainly looking for grain handling, uh, labouring positions, um, We'll be operating two shifts at our Condodlin, Yobalong West, uh, Colleen and Wylong sites, and we'll be operating extended shifts at Lake Adelico, Naradin, Kaikoura and Tullabagil. Brilliant. That's probably a good segue into a couple of audience questions that we've got here, Craig. So this one comes from Jock. Can you please reassure us that we have enough staff to run 24 hours out at Condo? Yes, um, you see we have. We're 100% at Condoblin, uh recruited. So we can run 24 hours if, if need. We'll like probably run about 20 hours, but if we need to run 24 hours, we will. Brilliant. That's great. We've also got another one here from Tim Craig. Are you able to answer it for us? Can you give us the operating hours for the Colleen site? Yeah, Colleen, we'll be, we will be running two shifts uh, again, same as Condoblin. We'll be probably running two 10-hour shifts, um, but if need be, we can run up to 24 hours a day. Brilliant. And we've got a third one coming from Rod. When will Lake Jellico site be open for sampling? Can you um, can you give us an update there, please, Craig? Yes, um, just contact Will Whiting, the site manager out there, or myself, and... Um, we are ready to receive um, pretty much sampling we can do today if we need to. 
Brilliant. Thanks for all those questions. They were good ones. I now I'll throw across to Craig um, Cochran just to get an update in regards to equipment and what's been happening in that space. Robert mentioned that we had some new dogs and stackers coming into the fleet. Can you just elaborate on that, please, Craig? Good morning, all, and thanks, Iz. Um, look, this crop certainly has enormous potential, and we started planning for it way back in March, which is earlier than normal. Um, you throw in on top of that a COVID pandemic, uh, on top of our normal harvest challenges that we plan for, it's certainly been a complex uh, process to go through, but we're very confident that those plans are in place now. Um, obviously, supporting those plans is the equipment that Robert was talking about. And in the last six months alone, we've spent more than $15 million on getting new tarps, 21 additional stackers and drive over hoppers that can handle 400 tonnes an hour to complement them. Uh, when you look at the planning of our stacker moves, uh, that's well and truly underway now. We have our first stackers moving from the north down into southern New South Wales this weekend. Uh, so it's fantastic to see that in play already. So all in all, Izzy, we're very confident that we've got the uh, the fleet here to handle the, the big crop that's coming. Brilliant. That's pleasing. It sounds like we've got recruitment and equipment pretty well under wraps prior to harvest, which is fantastic. As we heard from Robert, Grain Corp has been busy planning for over the last six months to ensure that we remain COVID safe this harvest. I think we'll take a moment with Woz to do a bit of a deep dive into what those changes actually are when it comes to COVID. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Um, yeah, obviously Grain Corp, no different to anyone else. Uh, obviously, since March, pretty much, we've, we've been all living with the COVID situation. So, um, Grain Corp, we've adapted very quickly, obviously, over the uh, last six to seven months, our outload program, we have made contactless as well and, and sort of obviously uh, adhered to all the requirements that have been needed to obviously maintain our, the safety of our staff and obviously of our customers as well. So uh, a lot of planning in the past few months has gone into obviously how we're going to do the harvest, um, which is uh, something that we're working on right now. So basically uh, a revised delivery process across our East Coast network has been developed to reduce human contact allowing almost all delivered functions to be contact-free while maintaining our commitment to quality service. Grain Corp's advanced contact-free technology platform, such as Fastway for grain sampling and receivables, and our Connect for digital transactions are central to the revised plan, as are the changes to existing practices. Now, there's four key things that we're working on at Grain Corp to obviously keep everyone safe and obviously keep the efficiency of our sites and I'll run through them right now. So the first one is to minimise movement of all Grain Corp staff and customers at all time. So this includes, but not limit to, uh, no access inside our sample stands and way bridges. We are particularly aiming to minimise movement of truck drivers on our sites. Social distancing and hygiene measures will be enforced as standard practices at all sites. Along with all drivers and growers are required to scan in via QR code uh, and obviously we'll have a manual form there as well at the site uh, um, to sign in as well if you obviously don't have the phone set up uh, uh, at the sample stand. And then again, as the truck tears off at the Weybridge, we'll require that again to know that you've left the site. The second point will be the use of the updated delivery advice form. Now, this is really important for us that obviously uh, really from an efficiency point of view and obviously to get the right details and, and make things work uh, as smoothly as possible. So an updated delivery advice form will assist with reducing the con uh, contact between Grain Corp staff and our growers slash truck drivers. Also, this process will increase the efficiencies at our sample stands. The delivery advice form must be used for every delivered load into the site and for every sample uh, that is tested at our sites. Samples will need to be provided to Grain Corp in Ziploc bags. We will test the, the samples and then call or text you with the results. Uh, just please note uh, the delivery advice will be not returned after use. Uh, the third point, uh, there will be no option to select cash or transfer grain to contracts at the sample stand or our way bridges. Uh, all deliveries will be placed into warehousing and transferred by our Crop Connect or the grower hotline, 1800 grains. We will still collect NGR, paddock details, treatment status and vendor debts at the sample stand and Weybridge and maintain active live prices at all our sites. And the fourth point, no transfer of clipboards around the site with the drivers. Any paperwork required will not be handed back or signed. The size of the text on the paperwork, paperwork sorry, will be increased to assist in reading from a distance. 
so that's basically yeah the the overall picture of what we're trying to achieve, Izzy. Brilliant. Thanks, Was. We might just take a moment to have a look at our COVID flow chart, just so one you can get a visual understanding of how you'll move around the site, but would also get Was to explain that as we um as we go. Yeah, not a problem, Izzy. As you can see there, that there's the flow chart there. So I'll talk more specifically to actually delivering of a load. So basically the process of coming into the site's no different. Uh, obviously the truck will arrive at the sample stand. Uh, obviously you'll pass your delivery advice uh, to, to the sample stand. Some of them, what we're trying to do is obviously whether it's a little clip off the side of the sample stand or a bucket that you can place it in so the driver can obviously put that in. The sample stand staff will then uh, pull that up and obviously can start the process of sampling your load. Uh, and the truck will move forward. Uh, obviously, you'll come back to the sample stand. Uh, please you know, sign into the QR code or sign in on the manual uh, uh, forms that we'll have there to register that you're on site. Um, and then the staff will obviously present you with the receival docket once, uh, your, uh, once the assessment has been completed. Um, you will we'll then obviously proceed onto the way bridge. Um, as you can see in the flow chart there, it is, there's a little bit going on, but the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the receival docket, the font down the bottom, which has critical details that we require for our Weybridge uh, attendance to see, so the, the storage code, NGR, date, time, things like that, truck rego have been enlarged. So basically you just need to show that out the window. Uh, the Weybridge attendant can see that, process that, process that uh, ticket, and obviously capture your gross weight. You are then... Continue on to the storage that you need to move to. Uh, once again, show that same docket to the hopper attendant who can obviously see that you're in the right place, uh, can see the storage and the bin, bin number, uh, and obviously you'll discharge the load there and then return back to the Weybridge to tear off. Uh, you'll receive uh, printed out dockets uh, like you normally do, so that you will still receive printed dockets uh, at the sample at, at the Weybridge as you tear off. Uh, and then we'll ask you to then obviously sign back out again on the QR code or the manual uh, form that will be there. Um, and, yeah, uh, that will be, uh, I suppose, the, the delivery, um, what we're trying to achieve there, Izzy. Brilliant. Thank you. Now, we've got some audience questions here that we might cover off as well. So the first one's from Andrew. We are required to provide a delivery advice form when delivering. Can you please explain this form and where do we get a copy of it from? Yeah, not a problem. Uh, so basically, our, on our website, our Grain Corp website, there uh, there is access to the the new delivery advice, which you can download yourself. I, I'd certainly encourage you all to do that. You can pre-populate it. It's got the capability to go in and pre-populate uh, information, which mightn't change and make it a little bit easier for your uh, drivers, so they're not having to write as much out each time. So things like NGR, trading name, potentially the truck rego, these types of things you might already want pre-populated. Um, we will have copies uh, at site as well to, to hand out. Um, uh, obviously, uh, we, we encourage you to have them prior to coming in just to make the, the process very seamless and uh, it's all about turnaround times this year with obviously the, the big volume. So uh, I encourage you to um, obviously download off the website or contact our friendly Grail Services team uh, who are based in Wagga on, on the 1800 Grains number and they can certainly send you the information as well or some of the um, documents uh, with regards to the delivery advice to assist you there as well. Thanks, Izzy. Brilliant. Thank you. I might throw across to Craig Cochrane just to give us an update in regards to the in-crop glyphosate of barley and durum that we noticed there's a question about on that grower delivery summary. No worries at all, Izzy. Look, continued market access is a key priority for us all um, and we need to manage that. With that in mind, it's important that we know exactly what your crops have been treated with. For instance, glyphosate, it isn't approved for in-crop use. Um, so, for example, crop topping or desiccating on malt barley in Australia. So any crops that have had glyphosate on it uh, in crop, the maximum we can receive it as is bar one. Uh, for ME tolerant varieties, we do need to manage the MRLs both domestically and internationally. So it's vital that you accurately declare what, if any, treatments have been applied in crop. Uh, for Dura markets, whilst there are MRLs in place for the EU for glyphosate, um, our international customers are actually contracting even lower levels. So much level than the Australian and the EU MRL requirements. So to manage this, we really do need those declarations on in-crop glyphosate use um, to be accurate. 
Um, it won't affect the grade, but it provides us that information that we need to be able to get into those international markets for our customers. So in terms of pesticides, it is the most lucrative market for us is the EU, um, and it's a PRF market, so they have those really low levels of MRLs. So uh, we really need to know what you have treated, but our advice would be that you shouldn't treat in-crop uh, durum uh, with pesticides because it really does limit where it's going to go to. Thanks, Liz. Lovely. Thanks for that, Craig. I might get throw across to Craig Hafner and just get an understanding, Craig, with all these COVID changes, what's happening with retesting? So if a girl wants to get a retest done, what do they do there? Yes, yeah, easy. the grower or the truck driver can request a retest uh, before moving away from the sample stand. Uh, this can be done from the sample bucket or the truck can be reprobed. Uh, the second result will be used. Um, Hopefully with GrainCorp using Croptimizer, uh, any marginal results um, can be upgraded anyway, so a lot of retesting shouldn't be needed. Lovely. Now we've had a question come in here from Jim that relates to the COVID piece as well, Craig. How will the contact-free sampling work for grower samples this year? Yes, the, um, the growers need to bring their samples in in a Ziploc bag. Um, with a delivery advice in the bag. There's uh, one there. The sample, uh, we need about a kilo of grain in the bag. Uh, the test will be done as soon as possible and the results will be phoned or SMSed to the grower. The um, sample will be left in the bucket at the bottom of the stand and we will, um, the samplers will grab it from there. Brilliant. Thanks, Craig. We've got another question coming here from the audience. This one's from Brenda. If we're going contactless, how does the grower sell their grain on the Weybridge? I'll get Phil to answer this one. Uh, good morning, all. Yeah, is um, Warwick alluded to before, uh, part of the COVID plan is all, all grain's going to be placed into warehouse this year. Um, our Crop Connect platform um, can then be utilised to complete all your transactions. The Crop Connect platform um, allows you to see your loads, uh, see where a truck is on site, use it as a stock management tool, cash your loads, and also manage your contracts. Um, it also has accounting features and get your delivery summaries, RCTIs. Um, there's also the option to, to set up notifications to send to your mobile phone the load uh, of when your truck's leaving site. Crop Connect's basically your one-stop um, shop, and I just suggest get in contact, get with the 1-800 grains or get on to Crop Connect before harvest to make sure everything's set up, have a look around. Um, if you have any questions, yeah, just call that number and, and, and the guys in, in Wagga can certainly help you out. Brilliant. Another really useful resource that growers can use as well on Crop Connect is our YouTube channel. So if you've got any, any questions or things you want to check out, feel free to check out the YouTube or give the 1-800 grains a, um, a call and they'll be able to help you as well. Phil, you mentioned there that everything will automatically go into warehouse and then we utilise Crop Connect to do the sales. What costs and other benefits are involved in that? Uh, there's zero costs involved with Crop Connect, is it? Um, warehouse fees are only uh, applicable for when you decide to sell outside the, the grace period, which is your month of delivery plus two months free warehousing. Um, the main benefit of warehousing your grain is Croptimizer. For those who don't know, it's our quality upgrade uh, program, which is applicable to wheat and barley. Um, to meet, to, to be eligible for, for Croptimizer, you do need to meet three cr uh, key criteria. Um, first one is to meet the, the parameters with, with your protein and screenings. Uh, the second is you need to have grower equity. What does that mean? Um, it means you need to have delivered the higher grade previously. And the third one that uh, comes into it is the stack position at site. Um, you will receive a, day, a daily text message if you're, if you're eligible, and um, then you just need to ring that 1-800-GRADE grains number to, to get it done. Lovely. Thanks for that, Phil. We've had a question come in here from Rod. Can you please give us some information about the grain court pools available this harvest? Are you able to give us some insight into pools this year? Please, Phil. Yeah, no worries. We'll certainly will be running our pools program again, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, please just don't hesitate to give me a buzz. 
um, or I can also get our pools manager to, to call you directly about that. Um, with the pools program, there, there's three ways that you can be paid. There's a harvest payment. Um, there's a distribution, which is, which is exciting, um, and that's quarterly payments. And then we've also got the deferred. So, um, yeah, certainly we will be running it again. And, um, yeah, it's looking pretty exciting. Brilliant. Thanks for that question, Rod. We've got a couple of questions come in from Lynette, so I think I'll get Craig Hafner to answer these for us. At Clarkiora, the estimated tonnage of the malt varieties, Latrobe and Spartacus, are 50-50 split. Can we have bins available for both? If they are malt, is the site capable of doing this? Um, Lynette, I'll probably give you a call after this hookup, but um, at the moment we're only taking the trade malt um, at Kaikiora. Um, there will be a premium for trade. There won't be much of a premium for Spartacus um, at this stage. So at the moment, um, with our limited segregation space, we won't be taking two trays of malt at Kaikiora this year. Very good. Thanks, Craig. I'll get Woz to answer the second question from Lynette. Are trucks going to be required to open their tailgate as staff often have trouble opening and closing them correctly? Yeah, good question. As always, look, Grain Corp staff will not be opening uh, any of the trucks' tailgates. Obviously, uh, the person who is uh, driving the truck, is, it, it's totally their responsibility for that, for that vehicle. Um, and, and that goes for, you know, rolling tarps and that as well, uh, rollover tarps. So no, no Grain Corp staff will be uh, opening tailgates or anything like that of the trucks. We'll leave that to the drivers. They know them better than our staff do, and um, I'm sure most of the growers and that can understand there's, there's, there's a wide range of different types of doors and the way they operate. So very, very hard for some of our staff um, to, to know the, the ins and outs of every type of truck there. So we'll certainly be leaving that to the driver, um, Izzy. Thank you. Keep these or keep these questions coming in. We're more than happy to um happy to answer them. So anything that you want to get answered, please send them through, and we'll um we'll go through it the best we can. I'll get Craig Cochran just to give us an update in regards to how the business is positioned to ensure that we can manage the export task across the east coast. Thanks, Tiz. Um, actually, we're really really lucky in southern New South Wales. Um, we've had the Port Kembla shipping stem really well supported by our customers, which is fantastic. Um, the Port Kembla team are very excited about the upcoming shipping stem. Um, they're actually going to be able to operate the supply chain the way that it's meant to, uh, with the grain flowing out, um, so trains coming in and vessels being loaded. Um, obviously, we've had that reverse supply chain through these last couple of tough and challenging years. Uh, so the team are busy at the moment giving the two shiploaders a birthday um, and working on cleaning the, uh, the flow paths and detail cleaning the, uh, the silos. Uh, in preparedness for the upcoming season. So uh, similar to upcountry, we're actually adding to our team um, and we're also training them up um, to bolster the team that's going to be there to uh, provide that uh, export service for the supply chain. So, yeah, we are ready and willing and able, Izzy. Brilliant. Thanks, Craig. I'm really pleased to hear that our shiploaders get a birthday every year. We've had a question come in here from Rod. What will happen with frosted or pinched grain out at Lake. I'll get Craig Hafner to answer this one for us. Yes, um, we will have space for all grades. Um, if we do see, it'll be graded normal. Um, as per normal, if we do see frosted or pinch grain, it will be graded, but we will have segregation space for off grades if we do see it. Lovely, thanks Craig. I'll throw across to Phil. We've just heard there, Phil, that the, the business is ready and Port Campbell is getting a birthday on some of our shiploaders. What's actually, what options are available for our growers post-harvest to deliver direct into the port or into our ump country sites? Yeah, thanks, Is. Um, yeah, we do have the option to deliver direct to port, um, which will include our industry-leading two-day payments. Um, so that's an option. Also, if you're storing grain for harvest logistics reasons, or we can look at post uh, harvest deliveries in, into our country sites. I know that um, we've done some business into Colleen and it's something we're looking at closely. So yeah, don't hesitate to uh, to give us a buzz and um, yeah, certainly happy to price up and look at some options that, that will suit you guys. 
Brilliant. Thanks, Phil. We've had a question come in, and it's there. The, the question is, I'm interested to understand more about the canola sustainability changes. Um, I'll get Phil to answer this one as well, please. Yeah, thanks, Brendan. Um, basically, seven of the major exporters and NGR have come together uh, to make the canola sustainability program. Um, basically, the general guidelines of the program are similar to the previous programs, but you as the grower now complete one form um, that covers the, the, the seven exporters. Um, if you are growing canola, I suggest you contact NGR um, for further information. Um, complete the declaration as this will need to be done to ensure that you are paid the premium price. Um, and that price that you see on the Grain Corp uh, um, bid sheets every day is for, is for the premium. So if you don't wish to be part of that, um, please just give us a buzz and we're happy to price up uh, that on application. Brilliant. Thanks, Phil. And thanks, Brennan, for that question. If you've got any other questions, feel free to use that chat feature and we'll keep answering them as we go along. Now, Phil, I've heard 1800 Grains mentioned a number of times throughout this session. Can you just give us an update of who that is and some of the services that that number will provide for growers this year? Yeah, no worries. Um, this is something that's really exciting uh, now that all the growers from Dubbo South are serviced out of Wagga. Um, you ring that 1800 Grains number and you'll get um, some guys and girls in there. There's We've got three permanent uh, team members there, but this year we've got up to over 20 casuals that will be servicing the grower. So any uh, anything that you need in regards to Crop Connect or um, grower to grower transfers, anything like that, just ring that number. You're going to speak to someone local, which is exciting. And um, yeah, they, they should be able to solve all any issues that you have this harvest. Lovely. Thanks, Phil. Now, I, we've covered a lot in the last half an hour and there's been plenty of Plenty of topics discussed, so I'm just going to get Craig Cochran just to give us a bit of an update and recap what his take-home messages are. Thanks, Iz. Look, the, the key messages that I've taken from this session are the major changes coming this harvest are around our COVID plan um, in that our sites are moving to more contactless. Um, delivery advice forms are going to be required for both grower samples and deliveries into our sites, um, and that all that grain is going to be delivered into warehouse straight away. Um, you can then utilise Crop Connect to complete the transfers to contract, to cash, um, pools as well, looking at offers, viewing invoices, et cetera, and manage any of your notifications. Um, I'd also suggest that you check your personal details with NGR prior to harvest and, as Phil said, complete the canola sustainability declaration if you wish. Thanks, Is. Brilliant. Thanks, Craig. Now, if you've got any final questions, feel free to send them through and we'll answer them before we finish up. But... Prior to doing that, I just want to go around the grounds again to the team and just get their final thoughts. So I'll kick off with Woz. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Um, look, just final thoughts. I just obviously wish all the growers on a very safe and um, you know prosperous harvest ahead. Um, please, uh, uh, we will obviously uh, with some site managers there. We'll, we'll be sending out all details of our site managers uh, so people can get in contact with them when they're thinking about maybe uh, yeah starting to harvest or uh, you know want to bring in a sample so you know who to call. Um, and I do encourage you know all the growers um, to you know keep that um, I suppose communication going both ways during harvest with the site managers and yourselves. Um, we, we can only help you if we we understand. What your needs are as well um, so please um, yeah, support the team in that way and we'll support you uh, as best we can but uh, yeah just have a, a very safe harvest and look forward to catching up with a lot of the growers in the Wyalong area um, you know in the in the coming month. Thanks Izzy. Brilliant thanks Woz. I'll now throw across to Craig Hafner. Yeah thanks Izzy. Uh, yes it's going to be a big year. Um, I'd like to just Wish everyone a safe and prosperous harvest, um, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thanks, Izzy. Brilliant. Thanks, Craig. Have you got anything you'd like to add there, Phil? Uh, thanks, Izzy. Yeah, I'm just really, really pumped about the, the season coming. Um, it's great to see that Robert alluded to before about our pricing. Um, we've done some really good contracts into our sites, which is a sign of, um, you know, competitive prices with um, with hopefully great yields. So, 
Yeah, just escalate any issues. Um, site-wise, speak to your site managers. Pricing, don't hesitate to give me a call. Um, yeah, good luck with everything and, and hopefully it all goes smoothly. Brilliant. Thanks, Phil. And last but not least, I'll go across to Craig Cochran. Thanks, Iz. Look, uh, I'm really excited for the harvest. Um, there's been a lot of planning go into it. Uh, we've got more gear than we've ever had before and we've got the right people in the right places. So, uh, look, we're really, really itching to uh, get in and execute this harvest. So, look, I wish everyone all the best for a safe and successful harvest and uh, look forward to seeing you out and about. Thanks, Iz. Brilliant. Thanks, Craig. Now that concludes our webinar for this morning. Hopefully this session has provided you with the knowledge of what Grain Corp is doing this harvest to ensure your safety, the safety of our communities and also the safety of our staff. I thank you again for the questions that you've posted, which were great, and I also thank you for your time. And I wish you all the very, very best for harvest.